Yo guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be going over what a caloric deficit is. Chances are, if you have been trying to lose some fat, or if you even come across my page, then you've heard this term like a million times. And if you're not exactly sure what it is, or how it works, or how you can be in a caloric deficit, then this video is for you. A caloric deficit is a state whereby you burn more calories than you consume. So for example, if you ate 2,000 calories, but then you were to burn 2,500 calories, then you are in a deficit of 500 calories. Where the confusion often lies is with how you burn those calories. People will often assume that burning calories is solely done during exercise. So if we were to use the previous example of someone eating 2,000 calories per day and then burning 2,500, people might assume that, for example, let's say they are do using the treadmill and they're doing cardio on that, you know how there's like usually that monitor. You know, it's not necessarily always 100% accurate, but that's besides the point. The point is some people may assume that, okay, that number has to say 2,500 calories. Yet they may be, maybe that number tells them they've burnt 500 calories after one hour. So does that mean they have to do five hours of the treadmill? And the answer is no, because activity, exercise, training is only one of the ways in which we burn calories. There are actually four different ways in which we burn calories and exercise isn't actually the main one. It's actually your basal metabolic rate, often just referred to as your BMR. This is how many calories you burn at rest. So if you were just to lay down for the whole day and not get up and do anything, then you naturally burn a certain amount of calories known as your basal metabolic rate. Thus, you may know of some people who they don't really exercise or anything and, and let's, say, let's say you don't and they don't, okay? And uh, you know, you both just eat normally, you don't track calories or anything, yet they, no matter how much they eat, they just don't seem to be gaining any weight. And that's usually because, as people say, they have fast metabolisms, right? That fast metabolism that we usually refer to, well, that's actually the basal metabolic rate. The second way in which we burn calories is through our training. It is these calories that we burn through training that can help us create a caloric deficit. Third is known as your thermic effect of food, and the fourth is known as your neat calories, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. But these two are usually not as significant as the first two, so we're not really gonna go into them today. When you add all these different ways in which we burn our calories up, and you get a total number of how many calories you burn in a day, known as your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE, the number that you burn every single day, and then you eat less than this, then you are in a caloric deficit and you successfully lose weight. And if you eat more than this, you're in a caloric surplus, you gain weight, and if you eat the same amount as this, then you maintain your weight. Now, why is a caloric deficit important? It is because simple science and maths will tell us that the only way that we can lose weight, that we can lose fat, is by burning more calories than we consume. There are zero exceptions to this rule. Most people will assume that it's a certain diet, it is certain foods that help them lose that weight, but the truth is that it just comes down to whether you're in a caloric deficit or not. A good example to illustrate this would be the Twinkies diet, which was carried out by Professor Mark Hub, where he basically ate junk food for 11 weeks, but he still lost 27 pounds. And the reason he was able to lose that weight is because he was in a caloric deficit. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that you should just go and eat junk food. This is gonna cause a heap of problems. This was done, you know, it was a proper control study, and that's not the point he was doing. It wasn't so that, oh, look, I can eat junk food. It was to just prove that you have to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. So eat healthy, but make sure you are in a caloric deficit if you wanna lose weight. So exactly how many calories do you need to eat to be in a caloric deficit? Well, everyone is different in this regard. It depends on how much you weigh, how active you are, amongst other factors too. A common way to estimate how many calories a caloric deficit will be for you is by multiplying your body weight in pounds by 10. So for example, if someone weighed 200 pounds, multiply that by 10, you get 2,000. Therefore, this individual will eat 2,000 calories to put himself or herself in a caloric deficit. However, note that this is a very rough estimate, so it might not completely do the job for you. If you want, you could start with that estimated number though, and then adjust your calories accordingly. So that is, if you aren't losing any weight on those given calories, then you could then deduct your calories by another 100 calories or 200 calories, and then assess from there. The most accurate way to go about it though, is if you are to calculate how many calories you are currently eating, and assuming your weight is remaining the same, then you can minus 20% 
calories from the current amount. So you wanna lose fat? Now you know the number one rule for fat loss. Eat in a caloric deficit. And a bonus tip would be for you to like the video, comment, subscribe, turn the post notification bells on, and then you'll learn more about fat loss. I'll see you guys next time.